and welcome back. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I'm laughing because this new report I'm sharing with you guys today is absolutely insane. Uh, our housing market has been shifting so much and this report here, once I was looking at the uh, data, it's just absolutely insane. So anyways, I <laughs> uh, hope you guys enjoy watching this video. I certainly enjoyed um, kind of analyzing the numbers we have right now because the changes we're seeing right now regarding a huge pullback in home buying demand, it's just absolutely eye-opening here. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Hope you guys enjoy today's video. I'm also gonna provide a lot of analysis that you guys probably won't see anywhere else, I, I, I'm guessing, so. <laughs> Uh, let's just go ahead and dive right in. So this is a port uh, I, based on a video I made, or not based on my video, I made a video based on this report uh, yesterday because uh, Redfin reported yesterday, which was the 27th, that pending home sales fell 35%, the largest drop in at least seven years. Uh, they say at least seven years because Redfin's data uh, only goes back to uh, the last seven years, going back to 2015. So that's the a report I share with you guys. I'm not sure we're gonna be sharing that video or today's video first. So anyways, just wanna um, point that out because uh, the drop in paying home sales we have right now is a bigger drop than seven years as I'll explain in today's video. So here's the uh, new report from the National Association of Realtors just released today, uh, the 28th of October. <laughs> just, I'm just laughing because this report is just kind of laughable. Anyways, let's have a look at this. The uh, headline here reads that pending home sales decreased by 10.2% in September. If you actually Google pending home sales um, today, which is Friday, it's all over the internet where uh, pending home sales have declined by 10.2%. Uh, but again, when you actually look at the data, the data uh, shows a much different picture here uh, because uh, the number of pending home sales is at least or over a 10 year uh, low. Uh, I'll share some information here with you guys here in just a little bit. Anyways, all right, so pending home sales trolled off for the fourth consecutive month. So we had a decrease in the number of pending home sales uh, for the fourth consecutive month now. And of course, a pending home sales when a home seller accepts an offer from a home buyer, that becomes a pending home sale status. Also have a look at this because uh, the National Association of Realtors uh, breaks down the, uh, the US in four major regions. So all four major regions recorded a month over month decrease as well as a year over year decrease in pending home sale transactions. As you can see right here, on a month to month basis, declining by 10.2%. Uh, the West falling by 11.7%. Uh, obviously this is September uh, compared to uh, August, uh, you know, last month. Uh, the Midwest declined by 8.8%. The Northeast, anyone who lives in the Northeast, let us know what's going on there because uh, contract sign decreased by 16.2%. In the South declining by 8.1%. So that's what we're seeing on, on a national level on a month to month basis. And by the way, this is based on an index for pending home sales. It's called their pending home sale index, or their PHSI, which of course is based on contracts signed between buyers and sellers. So on a month to month um, basis, uh, pennings decreased by 10.2%, but on a year over year basis, decreasing by 31.0%. So their index based on contract signings uh, have decreased by 31% on a year over year basis um, as of September. And have a look at this. This is their index um, over time. This is the uh, past 12 months, and this is their index uh, for their pending home sale index uh, over the past three years. So again, right now, their index is at 79.5. That's a decrease by 10.2% uh, from August and down by 31% compared to September 2021. Uh, as you can see right here, their index at 79.5 is far below the past few years uh, when the index was actually over uh, 105. Now we're only at 79.5. Also have a look at this because we're not seeing a, just a decrease in contracts being signed in one particular city, one particular neighborhood, or one particular region in the US because it's pretty widespread. I, I think most of us would agree that this rapid rise in rates is really impacting every single market in the US right now. So look at this. On a year-over-year -year basis, look at these numbers here. In the Northeast, declining by 30.1%. The Midwest, declining by 26.7%. The South, declining by 30%. And look at the West, declining by 38.7% from one year ago. So what I wanna do for you guys today is look at uh, the index right now at 79.5. It's obviously much lower compared to any month we had over the past 12 months and obviously much lower compared to the past few years. But how does this compare to previous years? So here's what I did. 
go on to Realtor's website, not this one. <laughs> uh, go on to their website right here. If you just Google the National Association of Realtors um, Housing Statistics, it'll take you to more or less this website right here. You can find it. Um, anyways, anyone has access to this um, information on this website right here. But here's what I wanna show you guys because their monthly index uh, is right here, which is that uh, table I just shared with you guys right here. But if you go to um, historical information right here and click on Realtor Store, it takes you to this website right here. And as you guys can see right here, uh, this is a digital download of um, how their index has changed over time. And it goes back many, many years. So if you are a, not a member of the National Association of Realtors, it's gonna cost you $1,500 uh, to uh, download this information. But because I am a member of the National Association of Realtors, I think I pay like $35 a month or something like that, um, my price is $0. Here's what the uh, table looks like when you actually um, upload it. So hope you guys appreciate this. Um, I guess my dues of $35 a month is going uh, somewhere here so I can share this with you. And by the way, they have a disclaimer here saying, hey, you can't share this information anywhere, but I actually emailed the National Association of Realtors and they gave me permission um, as of September 29th, or not as of, on September 29th, uh, that I'm able to share this information with you guys. So anyways, I'm guessing you're probably not gonna be seeing this uh, spreadsheet uh, anywhere else uh, because of this uh, uh, hefty price tag of $1,500 if you are not a realtor. Anyways, look at this. So here's what happened, or here's what their uh, stats were saying last month or back in August. And they're gonna be sharing what we're seeing right now for September, which is just, <laughs> it's just comical. I laugh because it's, just, it's crazy how low it is. Anyways, so back in August, their index was 88.5. And based on my analysis uh, last month, I made a video regarding that. Um, if you exclude the onset pandemic, uh, which was um, April 2020, uh, when we had more or less stay-at-home orders, uh, the index at 88.5 was the lowest levels since May of 2011, when their index was 87.7. However, that was August. Let's have a look at September though, because this is pretty eye-opening. Have a look at this. So again, their index um, for uh, September is 79.5. And again, that's the fourth consecutive month of declines. And again, here's their month month change as well as a year of year change uh, from uh, September, 2021. So here, here's what I did. I looked at 79.5. Uh, if you exclude the onset pandemic, which again is April, 2020, we're now at the lowest levels since June of 2010 when the index was 76.4. So again, 79.5 is the current index. If you exclude April 2020, uh, when we had state home orders across much of the United States, um, as a real estate agent here in the greater Sacramento area, I wasn't even allowed to meet with my clients face to face. So it, didn't, it obviously made sense. We had a huge decrease in the number of contracts being signed in April 2020. That was when the index was 71.6. So at 79.5, you have to go back all the way until, keep on scrolling, all the way right here, June 2010, when the index was 76.4. So the, the current levels right now of pending home sales, in other words, contracts being signed, are at the lowest levels since June of 2010, excluding April of 2020. How insane is that? To me, it just goes to show how these rapid rise in rates, which again have risen by approximately four percentage points over the last 12 months, is really impacting home buyers right now. And from these rising rates, here are the true impacts for home buyers right now. I want to give you guys an update regarding um, how much the average monthly housing payment has gone up or mortgage payment. So one year ago, the median sold price in the US, according to the National Association of Realtors, was $355,100. As you can see right here on Uncle Fred's website, 355100 is a median sold price uh, in the US according to the National Association of Realtors as of September 2021. Uh, one year ago, the average 30 year fix was at 3.2%. So your P&I payment, which of course is principal and interest, of course, excluding taxes and insurance because that varies widely by the area. I just wanna share uh, the true impacts of rising rates, how that's impacting buyers right now. So your P&I payment one year ago to buy a median price home one year ago was $1,228 per month. However though, fast forward to today, Look at this, the median sold price, $384,800, as you can see right here, 384,800. 
And the current rate right now is 7.08%. Again, that's the average uh, 30 year fix uh, nationwide for people with exceptional credit. So that gives you a new payment of $2,064 per month. In other words, that's an increase of, drum roll, $837 more per month to buy a median price home today versus one year ago. And by my dumb math, that's an increase of 68% on a year over year basis. And this, in my opinion, is one main reason why we're seeing this pullback in home buying demand due to this big spike in rates. Uh, that's number one, but here's something else I also wanna mention as well, as I noted right here. Uh, we saw a huge year over year increase uh, in this um, average monthly housing payment. Uh, again, up by, what was that, $837 per month. This is a huge increase on a year-over-year -year basis, uh, despite the fact that prices, or the median sold price, has declined by 7.5% over the last three months alone. Uh, again, that's based on the median sold price in the US. Let me just show you really quickly. Uh, so for June 2022, the median sold price was $413,800. Now it's only $384,800. And by my uh, dumb math, that's an increase or a decrease of 7.5% in the last three months alone. However, though, despite the fact that prices have been declining for the past three months, they're not decreasing fast enough to compensate for much higher rates we have today. Because of course, this increase of $837 per month includes the fact that prices have declined by 7.5% over the past three months. And going back to the National Association of Realtors report here, uh, Lawrence Yoon, who's the chief economist for them, uh, stated the following. Persistent inflation has proven quite harmful to the housing market. We're seeing far fewer home buyers and even fewer home sellers. Obviously, fewer home buyers uh, due to the fact that we're seeing a huge decrease of contracts being signed between buyers and sellers. Also seeing fewer home sellers as well, um, as they've been important to you guys as well. So according to Realtor.com, as of yesterday, uh, for the week ending October 22nd, uh, we saw 13% fewer new listings compared to the same week one year ago. And in fact, over the past four weeks, we've been seeing double digit decreases in the number of new listings in the market. In other words, the number of houses being listed for sale has declined by double digits over the past four weeks in a row. And the main reason for this, in my personal opinion, is because a lot of people don't want to give up their historically low rates. If you have a rate of 3%, uh, it doesn't give you a lot of motivation to sell your house, given that rates are at 7% right now. Uh, Yoon also mentioned that as, as well here because they say many homeowners are unwilling to give up the rock bottom 3% mortgage rates. In regards to mortgage rates, uh, they also say the following here. Only when inflation is tamed, in other words, inflation decreasing to uh, more long-term historical averages, uh, only when inflation is tamed will mortgage rates retreat. And by the way, because inflation is so high right now and has been for several months now, uh, there's no signs that the Fed's going to pivot. In other words, decrease the federal funds rate anytime soon. In fact, the Fed is actually meeting in four days from now. They actually meet next Wednesday, next week. And the uh, probability for them increasing the federal funds rate uh, by 75 basis points is 83.2%. So the street is forecasting that the Fed's going to be increasing rates by uh, 75 basis points uh, by a probability of 83%. They also meet on December 14th, uh, their last meeting this year. And the street is really kind of a spread out or not split, not spread out, split uh, between if the Fed's going to be increasing rates by 50 basis points or another 75 basis points. And a friendly reminder for you guys, uh, the Fed does not control mortgage rates. However, though, there is an indirect relationship. So when the Fed increases the federal funds rate, mortgage rates could also increase as well. I'll definitely keep you posted, of course, with the latest developments, of course. Also, if you guys got any values video whatsoever, then please hit the like button and greatly appreciate that. Hope you guys have an awesome day. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you on the next video.